husband who you once believed Told you that he loved you and he'll never cease Found another lover with whom you can't compete For the love of the drug he now received Praise the Lord, so glad you tuned in to a great God well, I always say you have a wonderful show for you today, but it's really a program. Um, I just love to call it a program because I'm not putting on a show. Well, anyway, I'll be coming from, praise God, Daniel, the fifth chapter, the 20th verse, and Daniel, the fifth chapter, the 21st verse. Well, you might want to get a pad, pen, paper. You know, I always say it's good to take notes so you can go back and review and you can go back and, and, and start searching out scripture yourself to be sure that what I'm telling you is correct. Praise God. And then you can call me and let me know if I've done anything that's wrong. Well, praise God. Daniel 5th chapter 20 verse states, but when his heart was lifted up and his mind hardened in pride, he was deposed from his kingly throne and they took his glory from him. See what happens when you, you get messed up? People don't want to be around you. Then Daniel 1, 20, 5, 21 says, And he was driven from the sons of man, and his heart was made like the beast. And his dwelling was with the wild asses. They fed him with grass like oxen. And his body was wet with dew of heaven, till he knew that the most high God ruled in the kingdom of men and that he appointed over it whomsoever he will. Well, the thought that I had was breakthrough or breakdown. What is our choice today? So many people are breaking down and, and having these nervous conditions and um, scared to live and scared to die and can't take any pressure. They seem like um, their minds are just someplace else. They can't seem to get it together, for they feel that they just can't do this thing no more. They can't live this life anymore. But I come to tell you, praise God, you can make it with Jesus. With Jesus on your side, you can do anything. Oh, because hallelujah, he is the one that cares for you, and he'll protect you. Uh, and he'll keep your mind, praise God, and he'll help you to go through the trials and tribulations that you're going through. He'll do that for you. Well, living this life, we must evaluate our reasoning and our emotions before we take the actions on any situation or any decision we make. Sometimes uh, a situation comes up so quick that you don't have time to evaluate uh, or, or the reasoning for why your, your quick action. But in the midst of that, what you have to do is pray. And, and, and just believe Romans 8, 28, which says, And we know that all things work together for the good to them that love God and to them who are the called according to his purpose. So if you know that you're called according to God's purpose and his plan, then you don't have to worry that your actions have caused calamity. You'll know that all things are working together for your good because he loves you and you're called according to his purpose. There are some decisions that can be de detrimental, causing loss or injury to our health or, you know, well-being. In some cases, this is not so. No one is above God, you know, even though some people try to make you think they are. And there's only one true and living God. That's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The God that created the universe. The God that made man from the dust of the ground and blew the breath of life into him. And he became a living soul. Yet he is the one that Moses met at Horeb. And, he's, and Moses asked him, who should I say sent me? And he said, I am that I am. Praise God. He can be whatever you want him to be to you. If you just give God a chance. Yes, he is. And I'm going to run down through a few of his characteristics and his names. Praise God. Because God is all things. Praise God. 
He's Exodus 3 and 14, praise God. Let's turn to Exodus 3 and 14. And it says, And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am has sent me unto you. So you see, he am, he is, <laughs> praise God. Because he's I, that I am. He is Elohim, the God of all gods and Lord of all lords. And by his great and mighty power created the universe. It expresses his omnipotence and his sovereignty. He's all powerful. Oh, he's God above all things. There is no God above him. Praise God. Hallelujah. And then there's Genesis 1 and 1, praise God, which shows us a little bit about who God is and what he has done. And everybody knows this scripture. Genesis, in the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. Praise God. It, it, God is God. Ah, what can we say? Jehovah is the self-existent one. God and Jehovah is one. He is self-existent one. He's the one who in himself possessed essential life, permanent life. You know, he's the one that created all things. And then even Isaiah, praise God, 43 and 10 tells us, hallelujah, Isaiah 43 and 10 says, ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servants whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. So he's letting you know that he is the one, the only one. Before him there was no God. And, 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 and after him, there shall be no other God. Praise God. And even heaven says, I, even I am the Lord. And besides me, there is no Savior. So he's letting you know that there is no, you know what a Savior, a Savior delivers you. He, he sets you free. There is no Savior uh, 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 other than God Almighty that can deliver you. I mean, we have to go through his son, Jesus Christ, him and his father's one. A lot of don't understand that, but it's just the same as your mom giving birth to you. You and your mom is one. You came out of her. But how God is God. And, 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 and besides him, there will be no other. Twelve says, I have declared and have saved and I have shown when there was no strange God among you, therefore ye are my witnesses, said the Lord, that I am God. We, we're his witnesses because we trust him. We try him, and he proves himself every time that he is God. He lets us know that, praise God, that in every situation that we go through, if we trust him, if we pray, in the name of Jesus Christ, to the Father, that he'll hear. And like the scripture says, hear my cry, O God, attend unto my prayer from the ends of the earth. Will I cry unto you when my heart get overwhelmed? Lead me to the rock. God is the rock. Hallelujah. That is higher than I. So we pray in the name of Jesus because this is what God is calling for us to do. Hallelujah, that God will answer our prayer, the 61st Psalm. Uh, and then sometimes you got to go into that, uh, 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 have mercy on me, oh God, according to your loving kindness, the 51st Psalm. Uh, you have to let them know, praise God, that you're at the lowest point of your life and that you're calling for him to have mercy on you. And he said he'll never leave us nor forsake us. Mm -hmm. He'll care for us, you know. He'll fight for us. He'll cause a rainstorm to block the enemy coming. So what you think can't, 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 can touch you and hurt you, he'll let you know that it can't even come nigh your dwelling. 
He said, no plague will come nigh your dwelling. This is the word of God. He said, he's telling you and telling me exactly what he can do for us. You know, he, he, he said, uh, we just got to ask him uh, to call on him. Like, like David said, I called on the Lord and he heard me. Ah, uh, and delivered me from all my fears. Do you know fear can kill you? If he can deliver you from all your fears, then you ought to be happy to just praise the Lord, worship him, thank him for his goodness, thank him for his sovereignty, thank him for his greatness, thank him for his love, thank him for his care, thank him because he knew you before you even was placed in your mother's womb. He knows your beginning. He knows your end. Thank God through Jesus Christ that you are, hallelujah, a child of the king, that he's uh, prepared a place for you. He's prepared a people that shall obey, and you're part of it. You've been adopted into the royal family of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We got to be happy about that. Praise God. Pray, thank God because he's a covenant keeping God. And why I say he's a covenant keeping God, let's go to Genesis, the 17th chapter. Praise God. Genesis, the 17th chapter. The first and the second verse, praise God, which says, And when Abraham was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him, I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. Now, man say you can't be perfect, but God say you can. Now, who do you believe? Man's perfection is not God's perfection. So who do you believe? Who do you trust? Huh? Who, who are, are you trusting in the word of God? Or are you entrusting in what man is telling you? Then you can't be perfect. You can't be holy. But the Bible tells you, be ye holy as your father in heaven is holy. Be you perfect as your father in heaven is perfect. So if the Bible say you can do it, uh, you can do it. You can be perfect. Because God's perfection is not man's perfection. God's mind is, I mean, it is so far from man's mind that man can't even comprehend who he really is. You only got a little taste about what he can do for you. And that's just how God is. Yeah. And then it says uh, in the second verse, and I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. Have, and that means God is going to bless him exceeding, bless Abraham exceedingly. And just like he blessed Abraham, don't you know he can bless you? In this day and age, he can bless you exceedingly. People will be jealous of you because you got so much and, and they don't understand why. And you're nobody. Well, you're somebody in God's eyes. You're somebody in God's grace. Yes, you are somebody. And you're connected to a covenant-keeping God. You're connecting to a God that promised us that he'll never leave us or forsake us. A God that promised us that our storehouse will be filled. A God that promised us long life, eternal life. A God that promised us that we won't die. We'll just sleep away and wait. Hallelujah. Oh, my God, for that paradise. God is awesome. He's great and greatly to be praised. And we begin to go in uh, uh, verse 3 where it says that Abram fell on his face and God talked with him. See, the word of God is right. The word of God is awesome. It lets you know that God do talk to you. You know how? Read your word. Ingest your word. Because God speaks his word. And when you pray, pray his word. Because he'll answer to his word. And that, that, that's something that God does. He answers to his word. And you have to know the word so you can live by the word. The best to your ability. And God letting you know that the Holy Ghost, which abides deep in your sanctified soul, will help you to stay on the right path. So when you stray to the side, the spirit will talk to you and tell you, uh-uh, daughter, no son, and that's not the way to go. Uh, pray, uh, fast. You know, a lot of people don't even fast anymore. Fasting, you have to fast. 
to make yourself stronger in the Lord so the Lord can use you. Praise God. And four said, as for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. He made Abraham a father of many nations. And you can see that. You can see that. The, 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 the 12 sons, a father of many nations. Children born to them, 12 sons. Praise God. Uh, God is awesome. God is awesome. Neither shall thy name be any more called Abram, but thy name should be Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made thee, Abraham. Abram was stretched out to Abraham, meaning that he going to be a father of many, many nations, you know, and he's going to be blessed. How many of us wish we had children? So many of our women are barren now. They have a hard time carrying a child. Uh, and, 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 and it's not their fault. It's just certain things happen in our lives, and it seems like the enemy blocks us from prospering. But let me tell you, you can be suffering for years not being able to conceive. And one day, one evening, when you get together with your husband, God will bless your, your body with the fruit of, his, of your womb which would be a child. And you'll know that through all you went through, this is a child that God has blessed to be here for a reason, for a purpose. God got a plan for that baby as he got a plan for you. Yes, and I, I will make thee exceeding fruitful. I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. The Bible is right. Many nations, he, he, we're being fruitful. We, you know, we say fruitful. We do mean the fruit of our womb is, is children. And not just be fruitful in that aspect, but he'll make you fruitful with children that needs a parent. Children that need to be taught that there's somebody they can be anything they want to be in life. Children that's looking for love. We so selfish, praise God, we don't even get to adopt. But there's children that needs to know that somebody cares. Huh? They need to know other than God because they can't see God. They need to know that there's somebody that cares enough to take time to work with them. Help them with their homework. Take them in and and be a mother or a father to them. Take them in and teach them that God, hallelujah, is the only way. And the way that is right. And the way that will get them into a place where they don't have to look back at what has happened to them. But they can look forward and press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. We, we, these kids need to know that there's love outside of an orphanage. And we thank God for that. And you know what? And, the, and, and God said, I will establish, he's talking about seven, my covenant between me and thee, and I see after thee in the generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. So he's letting us know that this covenant keeping God, he's not just making a covenant with your parents. He's making it with your seed, your children down the line, your great grands, your great, great grands, your grandchildren. He's making the covenant with all of our seed. But what we have to do is teach them to know who God is. Get them up in the mornings, praise God. Uh, begin to pray with them uh, before they go to school. Uh, teach them, praise God, that God, if they pray and, 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 and with belief that God will help them pass that test. Teach them that God is alive and well, praise God, through the situations and circumstances that they will come into contact with.
Because there are going to be many situations and they're going to have to make choices. Some of them may be quick, but they have to know that all things are working together for their good because they love God and according, are called according to his purpose. So children have to be made known. Oh, we're going through a lot of stuff with this generation now because we love them so much, we never chastise them. And the Bible says if you doesn't chastise your child, that child will become a bastard. And that child will not respect you. That child will have no regard for you, no true love, because the child wouldn't know what love is all about when it comes to you. So it doesn't hurt to spank that child. I ain't say kill it. Spank that child and let it know, I love you. This is why I'm doing this, to keep you from going through what you would, would want to go through when you get grown. You'll be able to think back on how mommy raised you or how daddy raised you, and, and you'll know right from wrong. Mm -hmm. So God is a covenant-keeping God, and he keeps covenant with us, praise God. And then he says in the eighth verse, And I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art strangers, all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. God is just looking for a people that shall obey. He's crying out for us to accept him for who he is, to accept his love, accept his caring. Oh, he, he's Jehovah Jireh. He's our provider. Turn to Genesis, the 22nd chapter, praise God. Yeah, 22nd. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, him, here am I. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son, Isaac. See, God could have raised Isaac right back up, but he wants uh, 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 Abraham to see if he's going to be obedient to him. He says, Whom thou lovest, and get thee. Do you love your son more than you love God? This is what he's telling. He said, Whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him. Therefore, a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. Going on down, and Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and cleaved the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him. That's obedience. That's obedience. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar. And Abraham said, I'm reading on down now, unto his young men, abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood and the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac, his son. And he took the fire, his hand, and a knife, and they went, both of them. And Isaac spake unto Abraham, his father, and said, my father, and he said, Here am I, son. And he said, Behold the fire in the wood, but where is the lamb for the sacrifice offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went, both of them, together. Now I'm going to move down then to the 13th verse where it said, I mean, the 11th verse where it said, And the angel of the Lord called unto him of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham, he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thy only son from me. And Abraham looked up his eyes and looked, and behold, him a ram was caught in the bush in a thicket by his horns, and Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. Are you going to be obedient to God? See, he's a Jehovah Jireh. He just provided. He's Jehovah a, a, a Rafi, the God that healeth thee, Exodus 15 and 26. Yep, Exodus 15 and 26. Come on, follow me now. Oh, praise God. 15 and 26, which says, Praise God. And said, if thou would diligently hearken. See, there go that stipulation. If you would diligently hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God and will do which is right in the sight 
and will give ear to his commandment and keep all his statutes, he will put, or I will put none of these diseases upon you, which I have brought upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord thy that healeth thee. See, God can heal. Praise God. He's Jehovah Nissi, the banner that we lift up. What is this banner he's talking about? You know, it's not, uh, 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 doesn't mean a flag. They used to walk around with a bare pole, praise God. And they held it and put some, a bright ornament on the top and it glittered in the sun, which signifies to the people that God, uh, 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 his people is rallying him for him, that his people is, is for them and that his people is going to deliver him and his people is uh, 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 God is in the battle God is delivering his people and God is in this battle and, 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 and you can't fight a true and living God he's Jehovah Shammah praise God that God hallelujah who will give strength give peace unto you all of us need peace we're looking for peace but we have to get it from God, a true and righteous God, a Jehovah Jiskanu. Praise God, a God of righteousness. Uh, he judges righteously. And we thank God for that, praise God. Jehovah Rai, ah, hallelujah, he's our shepherd, we shall not want. And we thank God for this. I come to tell you that Jesus, the name above every name, is the only one that can suffice your needs and your want. So prevent the breakdown and get the breakthrough because that's all he wants. He loves you with an undying love. And may God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. Speak peace to your soul because God is a God that's wise. He's a God that wants you to break through and not break down. He got your mind if you give it to him. He said he who mind is stayed on you on him, he will keep you in perfect peace. Perfect peace is what you need. So all the names that I've given you for a just God, you must come through his son, Jesus Christ. So whatever name I gave you in order to pray to this Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Rophi, Jehovah Nessie, Jehovah Shalom, huh? You have to come through Jesus Christ, the name above every name, the name that can put a devil to flee. God bless you, as I said. And just study your word. Study your word and all things will look new to you. All things will come to pass according to God's word. Because Jehovah Mekidus, he satisfies, he sanctifies, and he satisfies every need. God bless.